I'm about to give you some very important common mistakes that women and men over the age of 50 are making when it comes to their skincare. You don't wanna miss this. You're gonna to wanna to take notes. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And on today's episode of Skin School, we're gonna talk about some very common mistakes that people make over the age of 50 when it comes to skincare. Why do I care about this topic? Well, as a facial surgeon who literally spent the last 20 years rejuvenating faces surgically, got trained to do that for another 10, 11 years before that, I realized something very, very important. And that is you can't have it both ways. Meaning, you can't have aged looking skin and have a rejuvenated facial shape. When the jawline and neck sags, everyone kind of panics and says, oh, I need a facelift, I need to do this, I need to do that, because they don't like the way the shape of their face looks. But what's happening simultaneously is the skin starts to break down as time goes on. You're losing collagen since your mid-20s. Discoloration start to really find their way all over the skin. Dehydration, dullness, roughness, all these things are happening to your skin at the same time as everything else is sagging. And really more or less earlier than you start to see the physical manifestations, which by the way, have nothing to do with the quality of the skin. Meaning that you could have the most youthful, you can see and do everything I'm about to tell you from like your 20s, and you're still gonna age structurally because that's just what happens hormonally as, as we age. So changes in the skin are happening independently of changes in the fashion. That's one thing, the changes in the skin, is one thing that you can actually control by doing the right things. So let's break it down, let's figure out what those right things are and what mistakes you're most likely making along the way. So, let's get to the core. The skin starts off really thick when you're young and it begins to thin as you age. And the reason why it thins is because collagen is diminishing as you age. It's both diminishing in terms of production as well as the fact that you're out there in the sun, it's accelerating the loss of collagen. This is just what skin does. It breaks down, thins. You're, you gotta look old at some point, right? I mean, that's what the body's biology tells you. It's like at some point you gotta look old, throw in the towel. Well, most people don't wanna throw in the towel because at 50 you might have another 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years um, ahead of you. So you wanna maintain the skin as beautifully as possible because it's an equally important part of looking young. Young skin, young shape, you're young. So here's what it comes down to. Here are the mistakes. Number one, it starts early in life, but at any point that you forego this or you don't take this seriously, you're gonna pay the price. One is sun protection. Folks, I can't stress this enough. It's the simplest thing you can do. 70, 80% of your skin aging is related to the impact of sun. Talk to somebody from, from Northern America, talk to somebody from Northern Europe, look at their skin. Their skin looks beautiful, flawless, basically because they see very little sun. They're not out there you know, playing pickleball in the middle of the afternoon like you are in Arizona or Southern California. You're really, most of the time, forced to be out of the sun. So your skin over the decades appreciates that. So what can you do? Well, number one, you can focus on sun protection, meaning there's really no excuse nowadays. You got these amazing sunscreens, and Elta is a really nice one. It's one I use, it's one my family uses. They have a clear and a tinted version and a number of other versions. But you wanna have, to have zinc or titanium oxide in it. Zinc or titanium oxide functions as a physical blocker, so it's essentially like creating a, a cover on your skin. And I'm really, for the time being, just focusing on the facial skin. Obviously, skin cancer and all that kind of stuff comes into play for the rest of the body, but I'm talking about the face for a moment. Bottom line is, cover the face, sun protection, Wear a nice UV protection hat. Keep the face covered as much as possible. If you're out there doing all this fun stuff, hiking and this and that, I mean, my wife is a great example of it. She literally, you know, she walks alone, she walks with her friends, whatever, but she's out in the sun probably two, three hours a day sometimes. But if you look at her, I mean, she's sunscreen, a sun mask, hat. She's enjoying the great outdoors, but she's not getting the sun, you know? And as a result, her skin thanks her for it. So sun protection is huge, number one. Number two, really, really important mistake that people make. They don't use actives on their skin. What, what in the world is actives I keep hearing about, right? It's, it might be a question. A lot of people have probably a different definition for it specifically. There's no scientific definition. There's not like a look in the dictionary and find the definition, but it, it, it's a class of skincare ingredients that have an impact on the DNA, the cells of the skin, specifically the fibroblasts, which are the ones that create collagen. They're the ones who produce collagen, as well as the cells that produce pigment, melanocytes. So if you stimulate fibroblasts to make more collagen, 
and you suppress melanocytes to decrease pigmentation production. You're winning the battle, your skin's getting better and better over time, it's getting less pigmented, and it's building and getting thicker as time goes on because you know, young people have thick, supple looking skin, you achieve that. Other forms of actives are peptides, growth factors, things that are again doing the same thing on a collagen level. The category of non-hydroquinone lighteners, which is the one I'm really most bullish about, I've spent a lot of time talking about like melasma and, and pros and cons of these different things, it's really, really ideal to be on a non-hydroquinone lightener because then you can stay on it for the long run. If you're on hydroquinone, which requires a prescription, you really shouldn't be on it for more than three to six months. So that becomes a little bit of an issue. So just know that that's that category of actives, the ones that decrease melanocytes, decrease pigment, the ones that stimulate collagen, increase that. And then at the end of it, you also want to do things that are directly improving some of the, the mechanics of the skin. Remember, as skin ages, it dries out. So you wanna increase the moisture of the skin. Hyaluronic acid is a, an amazing component of that. It's like a sponge, it draws water in. So immediately your skin plumps up, fine lines and wrinkles improve in the short run. Oil balance, really important. Pores get clogged up because you know, you're producing either too much oil if you're oily skin, or if you're dry skin, you might be over, you're producing extra oil to make up for it, but your skin is not me metabolizing and managing it right. So what happens is your pores get clogged and as they get clogged, they dilate and widen. So you get increased pores. Another really important thing that happens is the surface of the skin becomes dull because the cell turnover is less. So you start to see dullness and roughness happening to the skin. So another really important part of this entire process, which leads me to number three, is exfoliation. Most people don't exfoliate. I mean, literally you're in your 50s, your skin becomes more mature, it becomes more rough, it becomes more dull, and you don't exfoliate. Because you don't exfoliate, the skin never has that luminosity, that brightness, that radiance that young skin has. And probably one of the most important qualities of a young looking skin is the way it reflects light, the way it bounces light off the surface of the skin. And when you're on proper exfoliation, proper skin care, et cetera, you'll see that skin bouncing light. It'll look really bright and it'll look really, really luminous. So exfoliation is a huge mistake that people make. They don't do enough of it. Now, for those of you who do do it, what do you do sometimes? Maybe you go get like a chemical peel once every three months. Maybe you go get microdermabrasion once every three months, et cetera. Well, in between those periods of time, your skin is becoming dull again. This is a challenge, I think, because for a lot of people going and getting regular you know, microdermabrasion, regular chemical peels, it's just cost prohibitive, you know, to some degree. It's also inconvenient to go in and, you know, go through that. And it's not meant to be a plug, but just an important point is that we developed a product called Polish that is an at-home exfoliator that functions by basically digesting the dead stuff off the skin. So as a result, the skin ends up looking bright and fresh and you can do it two or three times a week and it's completely safe because some of the at-home chemical peels this is a big mistake that people make. At-home chemical peels, and there's not a ton of them, but there are some, really do have the risk of, if somebody gets their hand on it and wants to use it too often, you can actually cause some serious damage. A, you can make your, your sunspots and melasma worse. You could actually burn your skin. There's issues with it. And uh, the skin certainly doesn't like to be chemically peeled on a regular basis, like too often. So something more gentle, like polish, I think, fits the bill. And that's why I chose that route as opposed to developing an at-home chemical peel. I really contemplated that very carefully before I went that direction. Those are kind of like the, the physical pieces. Get on the right actives, and let me just summarize what those right actives are. So retinol is super important, vitamin C is super important, niacinamide is super important, certain peptides are really important. You put uh, that group of, of uh, compounds together, your skin's gonna get younger with age, right? Um, hyaluronic acid, decreasing um, the, uh, the dryness, uh, certain types of essential oils to bring moisture, ceramides, et cetera, to bring the oil balance down. All those are really important. So the right skincare routine is basically what I'm saying. That means you're not just doing an expensive moisturizer you bought from Nordstrom's or Bloomingdale's or some other place that really, really beautiful glass bottle that costs a fortune and uh, has a fancy name and you think, oh God, this is, since it comes from France, it's gonna do something miraculous to my skin. You use it for several months and nothing happens. So this leads me to the next point. The other big mistake that people make is they bounce around from product to product to product to product to product constantly. Why do you think your drawer looks so full of stuff half used, partially used, etc.? Because you don't know what you're doing. You buy something, and I don't mean that in disrespect, but how could you? There's so much marketing, it's hard to know what you're doing. So you're using these products 
you're doing the best you can because you've heard about it. You saw an Instagram ad, you heard it from a friend, you saw it in a, in a mall, and then you buy it, and then you realize, ah, that doesn't do anything, so you switch, 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 switch. One of the most important things about success in life in general, and I'm not getting philosophical, but I'm just gonna make a very ubiquitous con comment here. You can't overcome and win in any scenario without consistency, but it's not just consistency, because you can do the wrong things consistently. You can eat Big Macs all day long, you know, five Big Macs a day. Consistently, you're gonna, you know, become overweight. It's figuring out what the right thing to do and doing it consistently over time. So if you do it that way, you win. It's super simple. So that's the story. I mean, you gotta be consistent doing the right things. And that was really, at the end of the day, why I developed the Caram MD trifecta, because I got tired of people being unable to do eight different steps and finding so many of my patients doing the wrong things on their own. So Caram MD trifecta, it just puts everything that I just mentioned, all the key components addressing different aspects, with the exception of growth factors, puts it all together in a three-step process, proper cleansing, vitamin C, and all these other important actives. Which leads me to the very last one, cleansing. The most basic, right? I mean, I did a whole video on this, believe it or not, and that's how important I think it is. So the deal is this, your skin is exposed. It's picking up stuff all the time. It gets oil on there, it gets pollutants on there, it gets you know inflammatory stuff all over it. You gotta wash your face twice a day. And you can't just wash your face. You have to wash it with a gentle cleanser that's not aggressive, it's not abrasive, it's not drying. Because if you dry it, your surface of your skin is gonna get inflamed and inflammation means that stuff doesn't make it through the pores as easily and it doesn't get absorbed as nicely. And of course, your skin's gonna look a little irritated and red. So Gentle Cleanser, that's our product, Rinse, also is a gentle cleanser, gel-like, and a lot of people are thrown off by it because it doesn't foam. Like, what, what do you mean it doesn't foam? It's supposed to foam. Cleanse, cleansing means foaming, but it actually doesn't. If you do it that way, it's wrong. In fact, it got uh, Harper Bazaar's best daily cleanser. So that was a huge, huge feather in our cap. But at the end of the day, that's the, the important thing. You gotta cleanse twice a day. You gotta make sure the your skin is clean before application of product, and it's clean in the morning when you wake up. And then apply your sunscreen, live your life, do all that kind of stuff, but don't make the mistake of either not washing it enough, falling asleep with makeup on, things like vaping, smoking, a lot of alcohol consumption, lack of sleep, all these things are also big mistakes that people make. And as we get older, just like our bodies can't tolerate that much, you know, doing things the wrong way, same thing with the skin. If you really wanna beat up your skin, some of that stuff, like smoking is a massive accelerator of skin aging. Alcohol consumption can really make the skin look dull, and same thing with, with poor sleep. So eat a good diet, sleep well, drink lots of fluids, do all the things that I just mentioned. If you're above the age of 50, you're gonna win. Do it consistently, that's the name of the game. Do it consistently. Folks, I hope you enjoyed that, I hope that helped. This is, in my opinion, inarguable. You wanna argue it, send some comments below. I'd love to hear how any of this could be perceived the wrong way because this is really, at the end of the day, the foundation of great skin and it becomes even more important at the age of 50. Send this to some friends and family. Let's get the word out. Let everyone who you know who's in your friend group and family members know what they're doing and what they should be doing, etc. For more information on the trifecta, check out the links below, caramdskin.com. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. You're gonna get a ton of good information as well as CaramMD Journal, which is all about skin and, and comes to your email. Just keeping the information straight to keep you on path doing the right things. Thanks so much, guys. Dr. Karam.